It is Friday, July 22nd in the MLB, and I'm Austin from Calling Our Shot. And I'm Logan from Calling Our Shot. And we are back for our three favorite picks of the day. We got our two favorite game picks and one no one person and coming your guys' way. As always, guys, just do us a favor, hit that subscribe button. It's Friday. That means great vibes going into the weekend. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us grow this channel. Yeah, and let's hop into a recap like we always do, always being transparent. Close to a th- th- you know, a 3-0 and day, but we'll take a 2-1 and day coming out of the break. Marlins, team total under 3.5, no sweat bet. They scored exactly zero runs. Stranded, I think, 20 base runners. The Nerfy, that was an easy money, too. Dodgers-Giants game was looking good to go under. The live bet was like 6.5 when I was going to bed, and then a home run derby ensued in the second, uh, the last couple innings. They ended up combining for like 15 runs. But either way, we'll take a winning day. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, too, if you want to support the channel just a little bit. Our parlay of the day on Odd Jam, those will return next Monday, so... Just to be on the wait for those, we won't have a parlay today, but we're going to keep getting into it. We have two new All-Stars. We have to make some money. Consider becoming an All-Star, hitting that join button on the channel. We've got two new ones, Wayne and Bats. Too good for you. I assume that's what those uh, those acronyms mean. Uh, I don't really know, but I appreciate you guys, as always, for supporting the channel. And uh, my last note, I talked about it yesterday. If you want to join our chalkboard, we certainly would appreciate it. Click that top link in the description. Join it. Discuss some plays. Wave your Nerfy Nation flags. So celebrate with us. We certainly would appreciate it. But, Logan, it's Friday. TGIF. What do you got for the people today? Yeah, you know, yesterday, yeah, I, I once again swore off totals after uh, what happened in that game. Yeah, sorry. I, I can't predict the home run derbies, but I'm going away from totals today. And we're going to a first five pick. I believe we both have first five picks. So we'll start with mine, and mine is in my backyard. If you guys know, I live in Philadelphia. We're going to the Cubs versus Phillies game. And I'm taking the Cubs plus a half, first five run line. Currently, minus 122 odds is the best odds on FanDuel, as Austin's pulling up right here. It's kind of in- it's interesting how DraftKings has that juice to, like, minus 135. Like, what what the heck do they know? Like, are the Cubs a mortal lock for this first five run line? Sure hope so. You know, I'm, doing, I'm, of course, doing some line reading on this one, right? And who are the Cubs facing today? They're facing Gibson. One, zero, and six are in runs in each of his last three starts. The last time Gibson stepped on the mound in Philadelphia, yeah, rocking a 13.5. Uh, ERA in, in his last home start. And that was against the St. Louis Cardinals. If you remember what the Cardinals did to him, back to back to back to back home runs. He he was just, uh, he he did not have it that game. It's, it's really interesting to me how Gibson's, you know, road splits have actually been probably better than his home splits. But the last time, and I know this is a reach, guys, last time Gibson did face the Cubs, it was back in September of 2021. He went five innings pitched, four earned runs, and the Cubs did win that first five, four to one. So maybe the books are just dialing back to way back then when Gibson was traded. He was he uh, was traded to the Philadelphia Phillies, and he he was starting you know in Philadelphia, and he he had a bad start versus the Cubs. And the, and if you also remember at this time last year or, or September of 2021, this was post fire sale of the Cubs, right? The Cubs sold off a lot, of, well traded away a lot of their best players, so they were a really putrid team. And for them to to have decent splits versus Gibson, like to see that, right? Now, again, line reading, right? Why are why are the books so confident that this Cubs offense, you know, which is 19th in batting average on the road and 21st in OPS on the road, pretty confident, you know, that that they can the bats can show up today. I mean, statistically it's it it doesn't look all that great. But some of the some of the hitters do have decent splits versus Gibson. I don't know what the Cubs lineup's going to be today. Your guess is as good as mine. But if Jan Gomes is in there, he should be in there, right? 13 for 32, batting 406 versus Gibson. I think two home runs in there. And Patrick Wisdom, one for two with a home run versus Gibson. So some of the, these hitters have seen him before, and they've hit him before. And I, I hope we can get some homers going our way, you know, against Gibson. He, he's he's shown some some ability to throw some meatballs before. Now, who's pitching for the Cubs, right? Justin Steele, three, one, and one earned runs in each of his last three starts. I mean, look, on paper, 5.86 road ERA and a 1.52 whip. Those are bad numbers. But again, got guys, line reading. Why why the heck are, is the Cubs' first five juiced like that, right? I guess they're, they're expecting a, a good steal showing, right? Now, Philadelphia, ninth in batting average and OPS versus lefties. Steele is a left-handed pitcher. Could they come out a little bit rusty after the All-Star break? Sure. They, I'd argue that they some of these hitters weren't all that great going into the All-Star break, right? Look at the, with when Bryce Harper went down. It these these hitters, you know, the Hoskins, the Schwarber, the Bohm, they're they're leaned on a lot heavier. And Hoskins only batting 208 during July. Schwarber only 167 during July. And Alec Bohm 382 versus or during July. I'm gonna let you know right now. Alec Bohm's do some hard regression in the second half of July and into August because Alec Bohm, sorry, you're just not a 400 hitter, right? Okay, so. If, if Steele can sort of navigate his way through those young hitters and right, the Philadelphia Phillies, if you watch their, their team, you know, there's a lot of, you know, hitters in there that, 
that swing and, and just swing at bad pitches all the time, right? Philadelphia, 24th in strikeouts at home. Steals K line is, is something interesting that I was looking at, and I'm like, I don't dabble in K props, but that, that four and a half with the juice being, you know, the, the juice on the over, I, I think he hits that today. I think he he's able to, to deal versus the Phillies today. I think he's able to keep their runs down, and I think the Cubs are able to score on Gibson. So I am going to be rocking with the Cubs first five. You know, it's if it's an icky feeling bet, right? I, you know, you feel like you bet betting the Cubs, but sometimes those are the bets that cash, and that's why I'm rolling with it. But Austin, what do you got for your pick today? Yeah, so you kind of spoiled it. We're at on first five again today. I would lean towards the Marlins team total under just because you know you got to write it out. They haven't scored in 34 straight innings, but I can't do that to them. Also, we don't have a line for them today. We're going to the White Sox versus Guardians game, and I will be taking the Chicago White Sox minus 0.5 in the first five. Now we're seeing that at minus 106 on FanDuel, virtual pick them on almost all the books. So fine with me. You can bet it on anyone. We're just taking that first five or the first half, as some other books like the like the note it. Now both the Guardians and the White Sox went into the break pretty solid, both winning five of the last seven games they did match up against each other uh i believe the white Sox won two of those final three matchups but still both teams kind of going into the break hot they're, i mean they're both went around the same record i believe the guardians are 46 and 44 and the white Sox are dead even 46 and 46 now the white Sox today will be starting lucas giolito and i will lie to you giolito's not necessarily my favorite pitcher they could start i'd much rather dylan cease but they're expected to start giolito and you know we had a rough june a terrible june over a 70 ra but in july quietly dialed that in in july 2.84 ERA, 0.947 whip. Look, if you can just keep doing that, I'll be totally happy with whatever he does. I do know Julio Lito. He's a guy that sometimes can go like four innings. He can go like four no-hit innings, and then the fifth inning give up five runs. This is just what Julio Lito does. So this will never be a no-sweat bet unless we see the White Sox score like 10 runs in the first five, which is highly unlikely. But this year versus Cleveland, Giolito pitched pretty well. Seven innings pitch, one earned runs, and then 6.1 innings pitch, zero earned runs. In that six innings pitch game, he, they did allow one run, but it was via an error. So it didn't account towards Giolito. And we'll look at the batter splits versus Giolito. Not really a lot of good batters. I mean, you got Jose Ramirez, the guy that's really going to have to do a lot of the damage, 258 for Giolito, and a lot of plate appearances, like 32, 41-ish. Um, then you see a Rosario batting 400. He's going to need to get on base, but he's a guy that's normally just hitting singles, not a lot of home runs or extra base hits. I can afford a guy to hit a single today. You got Naylor at 250. Juan, Jimenez, Reyes, all batting near zero or .063. All those guys are going to be needed to get on base to get runs in on Giolito, and they're not really showing the ability to do it. Now, who will the Guardians be starting? Cal Quantrell. Now, Quantrell, you can't spell his name without a lot of L's, and so we'd like to him to take another L today, but he's going to enter with a 3.75 ERA, 1.29 whip. On paper, you would say Quantrell's got the better numbers than Giolito, but you look at his expected ERA, 4.52, and he's pitched against the Chicago White Sox twice this year, allowing four earned runs in both of those, going about sixth innings pitched. Now, the White Sox did not get to him until later in those starts, like around the sixth inning. We're going to need them to get to him earlier today, which I think they can, and Quantrell really struggled on the road. Today's game was in Chicago. Look, a 1-5 record. You look at his record at home, he's 5-0. and oh. On the road, 1-5, 4.66 ERA and a 1.58 whip. I imagine that expected ERA on the road will be more near the 5, 5.5 range. You look at the batters that the White Sox will be likely starting there. You got Tim Anderson, 357. You got Moncada. Look, if they can get some production out of Moncada, I'm, I'm all in. But he's at 313. Luis Robert, 364. Pollock, 333. Abreu, 250. Even Adam Engel. At the bottom of the line of batting 400. I don't know who was starting for the White Sox today. It's the first game out of the break. You never really know who's going to be playing. I imagine Tim Anderson's out there. Luis Robert did miss the last couple games going into the break with a head a head injury. I think he should be back today. Hopefully he is because we would like to see him at the top of that order. But either way, I think the White Sox have a really good chance of getting it done here today. Look, I think they're the far better team, despite the records being about, about equivalent. They have the more talented bats. And I think they have the more talented pitcher on the mound today. So riding with you, guard, uh, White Sox minus 0 0.5 in the first five innings. But Logan, you know what time it is. Grab out those flags. Nerf Nation started off with a great day, and we're going to keep going. Nerf Nation time, baby. Wave those flags. If you're not, if you don't have a flag, become a COS All-Star. We're going to keep getting into it. Hopefully, we can extend our streak to two straight Nerf wins for the second half of the year. And today, we are going to the Astros versus Mariners game. Minus 106 on Barstool Sportsbook. We see actually FanDuel doesn't have a line right now, but so maybe if their line's better, take theirs. But we see Barstool with the most best odds. We're taking it. Now, this will be the final game on the slate, I believe. It's like a 10-10 start. So you're going to have to wait to kind of sweat out some nerfy. But, hey, we think we can get it done. On the mound for the Seattle Mariners, who have won, what, like 14 straight games, will be Marco Gonzalez, 13-5 and on nerfies this year. Pitched very well versus the Houston Astros, 3-0 and so far in the nerfy versus them. Now, we do know the Astros. 
they can get up runs. I mean, this is a team that's seventh and first inning runs. They have Altuve, who's annoying to start off their lineup. Then you'll probably see Jordan Alvarez, who's smoking the baseball. But this team struggles to really score in Seattle. We saw them earlier this year. I don't even know if they had a run. They really struggled to score against them. Gonzalez has shown very good command versus this Astros lineup. I think he can get his, those first three outs. What about the next guy, Logan? Yeah, it, it's Jose Urquidy, right? Urquidy, 12 and 5 on Nerfies this year. Now, versus Seattle, he is 1, one and 2. So, two L's in there. But today, he's going to make it 2 and 2 in, in the Nerfie versus Seattle. I'm very confident in that one, right? He also, okay, I'm not jinxing our boy Urquidy, but he, he has a Nerfie in eight straight games. He's really turned it around, right? That 12 and 5 Nerfie record is a little bit deceiving because he's really come on late. He had a bad. You know, start of the year, but he's we want pitchers that are rounding into form, right? Seattle 10th and first inning runs at home. We know this offense, right? Seattle's offense is shows up one day, show, doesn't show up the next day. I don't care what they're doing on their win streak. I know that they're due some regression. Those batters are due some regression for sure. I think they can keep the runs out of the first inning. The over under set to eight and a half. They all they have to set it that high because the Astros offense can do that anytime they want i don't think they're going to do that today though and i i think we're we're going to get a really solid nerfy also you didn't mention it though but the last time we picked a marco gonzalez nerfy he heard us bad with the earthy he, he imploded against texas in the first i tried day. to forget that yeah you know it's it, it's it's okay he's he's given us some coins back today nerfy nation we're going to fly these flags how cool does this flag look though become a cos all-star and you get the digital version of it i just have to mention that there's nothing better. I might have to paint mine a little with some white Nerfie Nation flags, yeah. uh, letters one of these days. But that's our Nerfie Nation pick. There are a couple others we did consider. I personally didn't hate Rockies Brewers, but look, I don't pick Nerfies in the Brewers Park. I refuse to do it. One of the little fly ball, and that's that's a ender. And Sensatella is going to throw some turkeys to be hit. So I'm not going to take that one. We'll take this one. And then those, we got our first five picks. We appreciate you guys. Let's hopefully bring out the brooms. But have a great Friday evening. We'll see you guys same spot, same place tomorrow, Saturday morning. We'll see you guys then. Austin Logan, we're signing out.